Now we are going to move our attention here to Latin America, and we are very, Argentina in particular, excuse me, um, we are very happy to be joined as we continue the show by Zoe Alexandra, who's a journalist and the co-editor of People's Dispatch. Zoe, thank you so much for being with us. So glad to be here. Well, you know, we're always happy to have you. Uh, you know, we, I think, have had you on a couple times around the election in Argentina, just before, just after Javier Malay became the president. Uh, just sort of, I don't even really know how to describe him. A ne'er do well is maybe the nicest way I could do it. But some time has passed. So we thought it might be good to check in and just sort of see how things were going, so to speak. I mean, I think it was either going to be the worst presidency ever or the greatest, depending on what side of the political uh, ledger you were on there. So where are we here, I guess, several months in now? Well, I think even those who thought it would be the best presidency ever are definitely probably firmly on the side that is so far the worst presidency. Mm. Um, You know, today's a good day to talk about it because yesterday uh, 11,000 people uh, who worked in different state agencies, departments, ministries, lost their jobs. Their contracts were not uh, renewed. And uh, when they went to their places of work, you know, on this day where the contracts would expire, you know, trying to check to see if they lost their jobs. There are actually police at every single state entity to essentially uh, secure the location, make sure that there weren't mass protests as there were. Um, Police even went into the memorial, the ex-ESMA memorial, where the Argentine military used to torture and disappear you know, of the 30,000 victims of the last military dictatorship, many of them actually passed through the ESMA where they were, you know, sent off in planes and then dropped out of the planes. So police re-entered ESMA for the first time since it was made a historical site to essentially quell protests because of the thousands of people that were just fired from their, their jobs, essentially. Extremely, of course, extremely symbolic with the ESMA case, but, you know, horrible Horrible. You saw videos of people who were, you know, years away from retiring, years away from getting the pension that they worked so hard to get their entire lives just cut off. Um, I mean, it's truly a travesty. Uh, There's a mass strike planned actually tomorrow uh, in Argentina. Today, education workers were on a stage of massive protest, which has been brutally repressed. Um, We know that Millet has sort of armed himself with a cabinet of very far-right and hard-right um, politicians, such as Patricia Bullrich, who was the Minister of Security uh, under Mauricio Macri as well. She has had a very, very tough hand in terms of zero tolerance for protests. She, in the first couple of, uh, the first weeks of Millet's presidency, instituted the anti-picket protocol uh, which essentially says anyone participating in a picket uh, can be arrested. There's uh, he- much heavier police presence. People who participate in any sort of action where the street is uh, blocked, where mobilization, where you know transit is blocked, um, could lose their social security. I mean, we're talking about just the widest crackdown you can imagine. Um, this week is also notable, if I may continue, uh, because on Sunday. Millet, uh, a, a very kind of ridiculous interview was published with CNN, which is essentially the interviewer knowing that he can get views by just provoking Millet to say the most ridiculous things because, again, he's a ridiculous, extremist, far-right, anti-woman, anti-gay, anti-everything, anti-human rights person. So essentially the interview says, and what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? So he asked him, what do you think about Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador of Mexico? He says, he's ignorant. If he talks bad about me, then I'm happy about it. Okay, what do you think about Gustavo Petro? And he calls Petro um, a terrorist assassin. So it's been definitely a tumultuous week, to say uh, the least, about that in Argentina. Millet is certainly, uh, you know, maybe he's performing in the way that he wanted to, but I don't think many people in the country are very happy with how things are going so far. Yeah, I mean, I I thought that that interview, that CNN interview you mentioned was interesting. Uh, And it had some repercussions. Um, The Argentine diplomats were expelled from Colombia after those ridiculous comments that he made about the Colombian president, Gustavo Petro. And I just very quickly, also, I want to say People's Dispatch wrote up the 
the the tidbits from the interview, which is why I even know this because I cannot understand Spanish. But I did see that uh, the Mexican president responded to what was said about him. And I thought the response was really funny. So I want to quote it. AMLO said, Mille stated that I am ignorant because I called him a conservative fascist. Right. I still do not understand how the Argentines, being so intelligent, voted for someone who is not accurate, who despises the people, and who dared to accuse his countryman, Pope Francisco, of being a communist and a representative of the evil one in the earth when it comes to the most Christian pope and defender of the poor that I have ever known or heard. P.S. Hugs to Gustavo Petro. (laughs) The P.S. killed me. But all that's to say, Zoe, um, obviously, you know, he's he's upsetting his own, people in his own country with his policies. Uh, but what does this mean so far regionally? Obviously, you know, he's saying these things provoking the progressive and leftist leaders in the region in whatever way he can. Uh, but what impact is is his election having on the region? Is it galvanizing other far right forces? Um, or is it empowering leftist forces to organize more? Um yeah, what do you have to say about about that aspect of this? Well, I'll also just add one other element about this interview. They asked him, Millet has been essentially standing alone on the continent in terms of his support of Israel. And he went so far in this interview to say that Israel has not committed a single mistake and has not overstepped in any way possible. So I think just to give people who might not have that much context about Argentina, this is the kind of person he is. Um, And regionally, yeah, it's actually having a huge impact. So not only, of course, is this spirit of integration being whittled down, um, he has made so many verbal attacks against other leaders in the region, but also he's currently trying to galvanize other regional leaders to lead a campaign of sanctions against Venezuela. So I didn't actually mention what he said about Nicolas Maduro, but on multiple occasions, He's called him a criminal, a terrorist, you know, every single sort of bad word that you can think of. He's called Nicolas Maduro uh, one of those. Uh, And he's, yeah, I mean, concretely, he's trying to impose sanctions against Venezuela. So we know that in 2017, when the Lima Group was founded, the region had many uh, right-wing governments, many conservative governments, Mauricio Macri, um, you know, Sebastián Piñera, Many other of the regional leaders, of course, Ivan Duque in Colombia, who was the biggest stalwart against Venezuela, they were all they all joined together in some sort of ridiculous unity to essentially attack Venezuela. And when the the region actually collaborated with the United States in isolating Venezuela, in you know joining it in its diplomatic efforts to attack Venezuela, this had a huge impact. And one of the most positive developments of this progressive wave is that there is less regional pressure on Venezuela. We're seeing Nicolas Maduro being able to actually travel to Brazil and meet with his counterpart. The relationship between Colombia and Venezuela is at a historic high. Of course, right now it's a little rocky over the past week, but relationship had been completely closed off. Now the border is open. There's cooperation happening between the two countries. And now Millet is seeing this, of course, he's backed by the U- U- the U.S. loves that Millet is there, even if they say that they don't. Um, and they're seeing an opportunity in someone who once again will be able to attack Venezuela from the region. Um, unclear about how the other regional relationships will go. So far, Millet uh, said that Argentina would not be part of BRICS, um, which was going to be a huge and very important opportunity for Argentina, which is struggling in a very deep economic crisis, um, this would have provided a lot of openings for it. Um, it has not left any of the regional spaces, UNASUR, CELAC, etc. We'll see if he's actually going to withdraw Argentina from those. That would be another concrete impact of the regional relations. But so far, he's just managed to isolate himself, attack everyone around him, and say he prefers to do business with the United States and Israel over his neighbors. Well, we'll see how that goes. I mean, it does. I mean, I know he said that he wasn't going to join BRICS. Have we heard anything, uh, you know, just briefly regarding some of the other sort of related arrangements, the Chinese currency swap, which, you know, kept Argentina from going broke uh, last year? I mean, some of these other things that I think fly under the radar that he was saying that he was going to like immediately exit them. Uh, I wonder if perhaps he's sort of silently dropped some of that or if he's moving forward. Yeah, a lot of a lot of his campaign rhetoric was 
just that. It was campaign rhetoric. It was agitational. I think I mentioned on this show or one of them before that he he famously said he was going to dollarize the economy, which many people unfortunately took to mean that whatever they made in pesos would be the same number amount and that would just turn into dollars. Of course, that's not even what dollarization means. Dollarization hasn't gone forward. Dissolving the central bank hasn't gone forward. He did kind of walk it back on China because I think he realizes how much uh, it, it is necessary to not completely break those ties. But, you know, how long is that going to continue for? I think we're going to see. Um, I think he's actually coming to terms with the brutal kind of reality of what it means to manage an economy. And a lot of the things that he promised are not going to be I mean, of course, the harsh austerity and the complete uh, disregard for human life within his country, yes, but I think dealing with the external debt, dealing with the IMF debt is a problem that he can't solve by firing 60,000 workers, which is what he plans to do. So uh, I think, you know, it's too soon to say how, how, how much he is and isn't going to engage with China, but um, from what it seems like... It, he hasn't walked back on all of those uh, deals that his predecessor had made. Mm -hmm. And Zoe, how is the relationship with the Americans? I mean, you know, all these Democrats and we are, we do have a democratic administration right now um, who are very much against far right Donald Trump and the antics of these kind of far right clowns. And, you know, Trump is the biggest threat ever. And so is anybody like him. And that's why we have to get out and vote in November. So I imagine the Biden administration must be up in arms over this 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 far right clownish Argentinian president. Am, am I right, Zoe? <laughs> uh, no, no. I think <laughs> clear clear in your intonation. <laughs> They're definitely not. I mean, they did make statements. Oh wow, this guy's crazy. I mean, it's hard. You you're kind of forced to when someone says such violent and insane things. But important to note, yesterday, uh, Laura Richardson, the sweetheart of Southcom. Uh, who really is at, in the current moment kind of someone everyone in Latin America loves to hate because she, as they say, says the quiet part out loud, like our military presence is important to uh, secure resources in Latin America and the region of Latin America is important for having access to oil and minerals and all of these other things, which U.S. capitalism needs to survive. Um, and so she is there right now. Um you know, he's he's had he came to the United States. He met with uh, uh, different members of the Biden administration. They said relations have never been better. We've seen a lot of different magazines sort of praising his economic policy, which is just insulting. Um, we saw him actually attend CPAC. Great praise for Donald Trump. He loves Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he's willing to work with Biden, but he actually would prefer Donald Trump. So, yeah, he's definitely cozying up for sure. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's seeing him at CPAC was truly a full circle moment, I think. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, I guess at least there were very few people at CPAC this year. Maybe that, that's what I, I wasn't there, but that's what I heard. It was like a record low attendance. So maybe Ooh. that's our saving grace here is that he was not, uh, not uh, uh, more – more widely heard. Uh, nonetheless, well, very interesting on a range of different fronts here. Obviously, you guys are covering this very closely as well as, well, basically everything in Latin America is being covered very closely by People's Dispatch, just like pretty much everything in the world. So peoplesdispatch.org. And if you are struggling with the volume of great articles in People's Dispatch <laughs> tomorrow, Friday, I think at 10 a.m., it might be at 10.30 a.m., but go to there, you 10 a.m.? 11. Yes. 11 a.m. I'm wrong every time. Uh, Doesn't matter. It remains there Eastern for days. Eastern time, please, for those of us not Eastern in the same time, time zone as you guys. Eastern it's time. actually it's actually 8:30 Indian Standard Time, which is the time that maintains. Actually, okay, no, so it's at 9:30. <laughs> what's important is that wow. if you go to the wow, People's Dispatch YouTube this on Friday. You will see, give the people what they want with Zoe, with Prasanth, with Vijay Prashad, where they go over all of the previous week's stories so that you don't have to work too hard to find them yourself. But Zoe Alexandra, journalist, co-editor of People's Dispatch, as always, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me.